Good evening. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. Tonight we have another in the series of uh, Parkinsonism educational videos with Dr. Abdul Rana, a neurologist from Toronto and a world-renowned Parkinsonism educator. Tonight, Dr. Rana is going to be covering fatigue and loss of energy in Parkinsonism. Good evening, Dr. Rana. Good evening, Dr. Bennett. How are you today? I am fine. How about you? Very, very good. Okay, let me start things off with a question. When does fatigue become a problem in Parkinsonism? Uh, feeling more tired than usual is not uncommon in Parkinson's. Uh, however, patients may not recognize this. Uh, Sometimes fatigue or loss of energy, most patients will report it as loss of energy. They will see, I don't have enough energy to complete my daily activities. So sometime it could start uh, before the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease and before the motor symptoms start. Uh, and uh, uh, patients may feel tired by the noon time. They are not able to complete their daily activities or household chores. Uh, and uh, it could be a manifestation of bradykinesia, which is a very important basic and cardinal symptom of Parkinson's disease. And in that case, it um, does improve in most cases with uh, the dopaminergic medications, uh, either uh, starting the dopaminergic medication if patients are newly diagnosed or adjusting or increasing the dose of dopaminergic medications. Sometimes these patients uh, uh, could have uh, more fatigue and loss of energy in the beta off periods when the effect of medications goes away, uh, the levodopa effect goes away and they start wearing off. So they may feel more tired or fatigued, and they can't do their household chores during that period. Otherwise, when they're feeling on, they can do their work without any difficulty. Some reports do suggest uh, that uh, the fatigue could be central, and in some cases, it may not improve by adjustment of the uh, dose of medications. Um, so uh, sometimes patients may uh, not appreciate this uh, as uh, the part of uh, symptoms of Parkinson's, they might consider this due to uh, old age or arthritis or they just uh, may discount this and not talk to their physician. Uh, some patients uh, may start feeling as time goes that they can't do two things at once, which uh, they used to do it before. Uh, they cannot complete their activities of daily life. It takes much longer uh, to finish their uh, tasks. And also, uh, it requires more thought, uh, thought and energy uh, to uh, take care of their affairs. So this could get worse as the disease progresses. And sometimes they may be OK for the first uh, uh, few years. And then it may become a, a prominent issue when they um, are in stage two, late stage two, or beyond uh, stage two. OK, what else can cause fatigue in these patients? Uh, there could be uh, many other issues besides Parkinson's disease which mm -hmm. could cause fatigue or lack of energy. Uh, the uh, common being uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, the patients with hypothyroidism may feel tired uh, throughout the day. Uh, they may feel slow in doing things and they may not be able to complete their work. Um, so other neurological conditions such as uh, uh, some of uh, the conditions which could be mild and subtle, especially in elderly population, such as myasthenia gravis, uh, that could be um, uh, a problem. Uh, in those patients, they feel excessively tired with a usual physical activity and with rest, they might improve. And then if they involve themselves in aggressive physical activity, they may feel tired again. However, with uh, uh, conditions like this, there could be other neurological signs and fatigue is not just one of the symptoms of this. Other patients, if they are depressed, uh, they are feeling low or they are dysthymic, they might feel tired, they might feel they have lack of energy, they can't complete their tasks. Or if patients have some kind of stress going on related to work or family life or issues with their children, as most patients are elderly and uh, if they are living with their children and uh, some family problems are going on, they feel it uh, as a mental strain and they become sensitive to these things. And also, they might have feeling of guilt um, just because of the disease or if they're a caregiver, 
they could have uh, the feeling of guilt um, because of their loved ones that could cause uh, these type of issues. In addition to this, patients may have metabolic issues uh, such as low sodium or other electrolyte abnormalities, so, sometimes low blood pressure, excessive uh, aggressive treatment of low, uh, uh, hypertension could cause low blood pressure uh, because what happens in these patients uh, when they did not have Parkinson's disease 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, they were diagnosed uh, with essential hypertension. Uh, they were started on antihypertensives by their physician and then uh, when after several years they get diagnosed with Parkinson's disease uh, because of autonomic dysfunction, uh, the blood pressure uh, drops uh, with the course of disease, uh, but uh, somehow if, uh, uh, if their blood pressure situation is not assessed or their antihypertensives not assessed time to time, the need for those medications, they, may, uh, they might run a lower blood pressure which may uh, make them feel tired as well as dizzy or fatigue, so that need to be addressed in these patients. Sometimes patients don't drink enough fluids uh, and uh, they are dehydrated, uh, especially in summer months and they could uh, uh, feel tired because of this. Some patients may not uh, have proper rest. Uh, in uh, summer months especially, we see that patients are overly active in the daytime. They're working in their backyard or working uh, on their lawn and uh, they don't get uh, in, enough sleep because the nights are short, days are long, so that is a time when patients report that they, they feel a bit more tired, although summer is uh, um, more exciting for our patients. Uh, other patients, uh, uh, they could be diabetic if their blood sugars are not in good control, that could uh, make them fatigue. Overweight patients may feel tired and hypoglycemia. Some, some patients may skip meals and uh, uh, they, they, they might get hypoglycemic which can uh, uh, make them overtired, and um, other patients may be subjected to uh, to polypharmacy. Sometimes some of the medications which may be required for just for time being. Uh, so, but these medications are started. The patients never go back to the physician or never ask them to reassess them, and then they end up on 15, 20 different medications, and some of them uh, could be shortlisted uh, with a careful assessment by a by an internist or a, or a geriatrician, but these uh, patients end up uh, being on these medications. So these factors could uh, uh, make them feel tired or uh, excessively fatigued, uh, and uh, these patients, as a result, uh, they cannot uh, work to their uh, full potential or they don't enjoy their life as they should, uh, in spite of having uh, a moderate stage Parkinson's disease where, uh, with uh, a reasonable control of symptoms they could lead a better and reasonable life. What can be done for this fatigue and loss of energy in Parkinsonism? Yeah. Uh, so in patients when uh, uh, it, it seems to be a manifestation of bradykinesia, uh, so adjusting medications, uh, dopaminergic medication, increasing their dose, or if uh, they are uh, uh, especially prone to fatigue and loss of energy in the wearing off periods, then addressing those wearing off periods by adding other medications uh, such as entacapone uh, or uh, uh, maybe resagiline or shortening the interval of uh, uh, the dopaminergic medication if that allows uh, enough time for patients and they can take medications at a reasonable uh, pace. Uh, so uh, that would help. Uh, otherwise, we do suggest patients uh, uh, to uh, enroll in a regular exercise program, and if they are depressed, uh, that should be addressed. They could uh, be started on SSRIs after a proper assessment by a psychiatrist, and if their nighttime sleep is not poor, uh, having a short uh, nap in the day and addressing the issues of nighttime sleep, which could be due to symptoms related to Parkinson's, such as pain, uh, difficulty turning in bed, or cramping, numbness, tingling. Uh, and nocturia, anxiety, all these patients can, um, all these issues can affect their nighttime sleep. So if their nighttime sleep is no good, uh, they will not perform in the day very well. So addressing that part is very important. And also, uh, we always tell patients to, uh, to have short meals, uh, but maybe uh, not skip their meals. At least three to four times a day, they could have meals. And if they are taking medications, that should be taken with a small amount of meal or a snack and uh, 
uh, they should uh, try to complete their household chores uh, according to their capability. They should, they should not try to overexert themselves and uh, some of the energy conservation methods uh, could, uh, uh, could be helpful. Also, they should give an enough time uh, keeping their slowness of movements in, uh, in mind to complete their activities of daily life. They should not try to rush things and uh, uh, having rest periods in the day is very important. Uh, they could have uh, maybe a couple of rest periods where they don't have to sleep necessarily, but they can uh, rest, they can lie down on the couch with their eyes closed, uh, and uh, that should help these patients. They should also not get um, discouraged if they are not uh, able to uh, do their work as they were doing before the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, and also they should not shy away from uh, for asking help to others, especially their family members, and staying mentally active is also helpful. Mental stimulation exercises, uh, I think, are very good for these patients, and uh, they should also do things um, uh, stepwise. Uh, they should not involve them in too many activities simultaneously, and then uh, they get disappointed if they can't uh, uh, complete those. I think uh, if they keep these things in their mind, uh, keeping uh, the condition uh, and the stage of their disease, uh, that should uh, uh, be helpful, uh, and um, they should not. Um, uh, definitely, they should not uh, uh, not uh, put themselves under these stressful situations. Very good, uh, doctor. Anything else to add on uh, fatigue and the lack of uh, loss of energy in Parkinsonism before we close? I think history in these patients is very important. Uh, uh, establishing a relationship with the timing of medications. It is very uh, important uh, uh, important aspect to find out whether this is a manifestation of bradycardia and uh, if that could be addressed uh, by, uh, by, by adjusting the dosage or timing of medications. And if that is not the case, then ruling out other factors such as depression remains a very important part because depression is a very important non-motor symptom of Parkinson's disease and some patients may not have major depression and most patients may not meet the criteria of major depression. They may just have uh, a low level of depression or dysthymia that makes them very tired uh, and they should, uh, uh, they should try to discuss this with their physician. At the same time, physicians should also try to screen patients for this and if the help of a psychiatrist is needed, patients should not shy away because some patients feel that this is a stigma to see a psychiatrist and uh, they should not um, not uh, uh, they should not be shy in seeking help uh, because uh, uh, that adjusting the medication or adding other medications could be very helpful and that can restore their health and energy level to the prior state. Very good, doctor. Thank you for covering fatigue and loss of energy in Parkinsonism. This video, as well as the other videos, are on parkinsonism.tv. Uh, thank you very much, doctor, and good night. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Good night.